Are you always on the lookout for new pieces of repertoire to help improve your playing? Having a great varied choice of things to learn is of course key to helping you improve different parts of your technique. So stay tuned to see how Melanie Spanswick's Play It Again Piano can help you out greatly here with a fantastically varied choice of things to learn. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner. The place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves the piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first visit here, then please do subscribe. All you need to do is click the little icon in the corner of your screen now and it's done. Every week I release a fresh piano related video for you. I've released a few videos already tracking my progress with Melanie Spanswick's Play It Again Piano course and at the moment I'm working on pieces four and five. The fourth piece is a study by Hermann Behrens and the fifth is a romantic style piece by Eleanor Cobb. And what struck me as I was approaching these both at the same time was that in fact they couldn't be more different. First, Lavender Haze was written in 2015 Yet Hermann Behrens died in 1880. The study is a very lively little piece that trips around the piano. Whereas Lavender Haze is much more relaxed, free flowing with soaring melodies. Of course the skills you need to play each of these pieces are very different, so it's interesting and adds a lot of variety into your practice time. Let's take a quick look at the study. Melanie highlights this as being good for developing your staccato playing and accents. In fact it's basically mainly staccato notes interspersed with longer accented notes in both the left and the right hands. Melanie also says that this piece is good for practicing rapid finger changes because you need to do a lot of them in this piece and as she points out quite often in unexpected places and she's not joking. As always Melanie's taken the time to point out some practice ideas and in fact she has written out a couple of exercises to help specifically with the finger changes so that you can practice these in isolation. One thing she recommended as well which I must admit I wouldn't have thought of myself was actually to practice this mainly legato first while you're getting used to the notes and used to the finger changes before adding the staccato on the accents in. One thing I can safely say is that so far, for me at least, this has been the hardest piece in the book to learn. In fact, I think I'm still a long way off being at a place where I'd say I can play it comfortably. So I'm going to be going with it for quite a few weeks yet, I think. You see, for me, the major problem here is staccato playing. This is a touch that I never really mastered all those years ago, so I'm, I'm probably really needing to learn to do it at my advanced stage now, which is less easy than trying to just remind yourself of something you did many years ago. I would never really learn pieces with a lot of staccato in there. I would claim it's because I didn't really like that kind of sound, but the reality was I didn't like learning them because it was a touch that I'd never mastered and I found awkward to play. One thing I have noticed though with this piece when you practice it is if you want to add a little bit of variety 
you can actually play it end to end, but hands separately. So effectively, you just play the melody, and then as the melody passes from the right hand to the left hand, your right hand gets a rest while your left hand plays, and then it passes, of course, back to the right hand and so forth. So that's quite a good way to practice through with different touches, staccato, legato, and of course, different accents, either accents and rhythms as it's played or accent in different notes. Let's now have a look at Lavender Haze. This is a very, very different piece, not a sign of staccato anywhere. In fact, it couldn't really be more legato. It's one of those pieces that has a lot of sound being held in the piano by the pedal. It has a beautiful soaring melody over an arpeggiated accompaniment. It's quite like a nocturne in many ways, I thought. As always, there are plenty of practice tips and interpretation ideas given by Melanie that you can go through and will really help you to play it. The principal problem that I found was the tenuto in the opening couple of bars. I don't know if you noticed, but the tenuto starts being played by your pinky for the first six notes of the piece. And then for the next two beats, so beats seven and eight, it transfers to your thumb. Now, I'd always thought that my ability to voice a chord was, you know, reasonably okay, not so shabby. However, I was very surprised to see that whilst voicing the pinky was quite simple for me to do, managing to voice my thumb when the tenuto passed to the thumb was really, really difficult. In fact, I found it was so challenging that I had to create a set of exercises that would help me to get used to voicing the thumb much better and also for passing the tenuto line from pinky to thumb during those first eight beats. There was something else I noticed when I was practicing this and that I was sort of tending to anticipate some of the melody notes as I was playing it. You know, by this I mean not playing them exactly in time with the left hand accompaniment, playing them either slightly just before the left hand note or slightly after the left hand note. And I was thinking, I wonder if that's normal, I wonder if that's even allowable to do that. Anyway, I was really shocked a couple of days later. I saw a tweet on Twitter that was linking to an article that describes just this thing. And in fact, in the article, they were saying that this is something that used to be done all the time. It used to be quite commonplace and then sort of fell out of fashion over the years. But now is something that people are starting to look at again as a valid way of interpreting. So, I think I quite like a little bit of anticipation, so I'm going to keep it in the way I play this piece. Lavender Haze is the kind of piece that I would sort of choose for myself, you know, over something like the Berend Study. But of course, by relying only on my own choices, that I'm not really developing a very balanced technique on the whole. The stark contrast between these two pieces made me really think a little bit more about the benefit of following a set of pieces such as the ones Melanie's chosen in this great series, because that way it sort of obliges me in the nicest possible way to not only pick things that I find easier to do, but to make myself spend that little bit more time on the things that I find more awkward. I've said before, we all have different challenges in the way we play piano. You know, I've heard people who I guess would take a piece like the Baron study and in no time at all they'd be able to rip through a very impressive rendition of it with lovely crispness and speed, whilst here's me struggling away bar by bar trying to get their hands under control. 
get that same person, you give them a piece like Lavender Haze, and when they play that, you'd probably find it much less impressive to listen to. And simply because it may be a style of music that they don't particularly play that often. And therefore, they've not developed the different techniques and ways of managing that kind of music. So again, I continue to be very happy with my ongoing journey with Play It Again Piano. I think it was a great decision to get hold of this book, and I'll keep going with it. I think the study, I'm going to need to spend a few more weeks working on this now because I'm still far from happy with how I'm able to play it. I'll play Lavender Haze for you now. It's a beautiful piece and I do hope that you'll enjoy it. It was something that I'd never ever heard before and it's absolutely beautiful. I'll try to post the video of the Berens study maybe in a few weeks' time when I'm a little happier with the way I play it. Anyway, if you're not already, please do remember to subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner, click that little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as they're released. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.